I stood in the middle of the city square enjoying a peaceful day when a police officer approached me with a cold, disdainful look. To him, I was just another suspicious black man, someone to humiliate before sending on what he believed was my rightful way. His loud insults drew a crowd around us, and I remained silent, watching as his arrogance grew with each word he spoke. But how shocked he'll be when he finds out I'm not just a veteran, but an army general. I have always loved morning walks. They give me a sense of freedom, a chance to be alone with my thoughts. Today was no exception. The sunlight warmed my face as I leisurely strolled through the bustling city square, feeling calm and confident. People hurried about their business, cars honked in the distance. But to me, it was all just background noise. I wasn't seeking attention. I was simply there, enjoying the moment. But something changed. I suddenly felt a gaze on me, and it wasn't a kind one. Cold, piercing, as if I wasn't a person, but a threat. My heart skipped a beat. That all too familiar feeling, being under scrutiny, just like back in service. I turned and my fears were confirmed. A white police officer was walking directly toward me with an expression that suggested he already knew who I was, Officer Jake Turner. That name came to me later. But at the time, I didn't know who he was, nor could I have imagined that he would be the beginning of something bigger. All I saw in front of me was the stern face of a man who had already decided I was dangerous. Turner approached me quickly, deliberately closing the distance, and without any greeting, he began firing off questions. There was a certainty in his voice that I had done something wrong. Without knowing me, without knowing my story, he was already judging. It was evident in everything, in his gestures, his gaze, even in how he kept his hand on his belt ready to escalate to more aggressive actions at any moment. Show me your ID, he demanded, not hiding his irritation. I could feel the crowd around us pause, trying to figure out what was happening. People started gathering closer, eager to witness the unfolding scene. A crowd is always a living entity, feeding on others' conflicts. Their interest in our interaction only grew, I remained calm. Years of service had taught me how to keep my composure in the most tense situations. I, I haven't broken any laws, I replied calmly, looking him straight in the eyes, but my calm only seemed to anger him more. Turner wasn't listening, or more likely, he didn't want to listen. To him, I was already guilty. The crowd began to murmur, people exchanging glances. I stood firm, knowing that I had done nothing wrong but my words meant nothing to him. His demands grew, and his tone became increasingly hostile. Each word dripped with contempt, as if I were something less than human. Turner's words grew louder. His tone became more mocking. He laughed at me as if this was a game he had already won. Every time I tried to say something, he cut me off, and the crowd stood by in silence, no one daring to intervene. It was so typical. They saw the humiliation, but their eyes were filled with fear and hesitation. No one wanted to be in my place. You think you can just walk away? His words cut deep, but I remained silent. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know I was a veteran, that I had served this country and defended it. And he certainly didn't know I wasn't just a soldier, but a general who had earned his rank and medals with honor and blood. But to say that now? It didn't matter. My achievements meant nothing to him. Feeling his victory, Turner turned and walked away, leaving me standing there in the crowd. In his eyes, I was just another one. The crowd began to disperse, and I was left alone. Inside, I still burned with indignation, not because I had been humiliated, but because these situations kept happening over and over again. How many more times? How long will this continue? I stood there, in the very spot where I had just been humiliated. But instead of anger, I felt only a deep sadness. I realized that my story wasn't an exception. It was the reality we live in. And I couldn't allow myself to respond in kind, or else I would become the very thing I had fought against my entire life.
The incident in the square won't leave my mind. The evening drags on, and although I try to distract myself, something inside me has shifted. I thought I had left behind moments of humiliation and injustice long ago, but today reminded me that nothing has really changed. Turner's cold gaze, his words, it wasn't just prejudice. It was a reflection of the system I've been fighting my whole life. I return home, close the door behind me, but the weight still lingers. The walls, which once gave me a sense of security, now feel oppressive. I think back to my time in the military. There, I wasn't just another person. I was part of something greater. Among my comrades, I earned respect through blood and sweat. But the moment I returned here, to these familiar streets, everything changed. My past seemed to vanish. As far as people like Turner are concerned, I am nobody. My thoughts jump from one memory to another, and I begin to wonder, does everything I've been through really mean nothing? I know I should rise above all this, but today, doubt has crept in. How long can one endure such humiliations, even knowing that the world is unjust? I sit on the couch, staring into the void. Memories of my service flash vividly in my mind. In the army, everything was different. It didn't matter what color you were or where you came from. There, you were respected for your actions, for your loyalty to the cause. We were one team, one family. But here, on the streets of my hometown, where I should have belonged, I suddenly felt like an outsider again. I recall moments from my time in the military, how we survived under the toughest conditions, how we supported one another. There, I was a hero to many, but here, in the eyes of Jake Turner, I was simply suspicious. That thought haunts me. How could he humiliate me so easily without even trying to understand who I was? Meanwhile, somewhere in a police station, Turner is probably bragging about his victory. He believes he did the right thing. In his eyes, I was just another black man who needed to be put in his place, and he has no idea what a colossal mistake he made. His laughter with his colleagues is nothing more than the echo of a system that continues to spin in a cycle of prejudice. But what now? I think, my hands clenching into fists. I'm used to facing problems head on, being direct and open. But filing a complaint against him? That path doesn't feel right. It's not how I've learned to fight injustice. I make a decision. Despite everything that happened, I won't file a complaint against the officer. I won't take the formal route to address this issue. That's not my style. I'm used to something different, facing my enemy head on, not hiding behind bureaucratic paperwork. But something inside me remains unresolved. Can I continue to stay silent as I did today? After all, these situations don't just happen to me. Every time someone turns a blind eye to injustice, it only grows stronger. My composure is my strength, but is that enough? Maybe my silence only reinforces people like Turner in their certainty. I get up from the couch and walk to the window. The city flickers outside, a place where I'm supposed to feel at home, yet I feel like a stranger. This incident is just a small part of a much bigger problem. Turner isn't the only one. There are many like him. And if I remain silent, they will continue. But what to do next? That question will stay with me until I find the answer. The morning started as usual. I woke up, drank a cup of coffee, and tried not to dwell on yesterday's incident. There were still so many emotions simmering inside, but I had learned to let go. This wasn't the first time, and it certainly wouldn't be the last. I wasn't seeking recognition or justification. All I wanted was to move forward. But even as I tried to leave it behind, it was clear to me that for Officer Turner, yesterday had ended as a victory. Somewhere in that same morning, Turner was likely laughing with his colleagues, recounting his victory. He couldn't have known who I was, and most likely he didn't even want to know. To him, I was just another face, another problem he had dealt with. But the truth is inevitable, and no matter how much Turner hides behind his prejudices, it will find a way to break through. I sat at home, lost in thought, reflecting on how often these situations repeat themselves. Little did I know, at that very moment, someone had already started to open Turner's eyes to the mistake he had made. 
In the police station, it was business as usual. Some officers were handling paperwork, others discussing recent arrests. Turner sat with his colleagues, still satisfied with yesterday's incident. For him, it was routine. Another suspicious person. Another chance to show his authority. He was recounting how he had efficiently dealt with that guy in the square. But one of his colleagues, after checking some records, suddenly paused. Jake, do you even know who that was? Asked a young officer, glancing at his computer. There was a hint of surprise in his voice. Turner frowned and asked, What are you talking about? The officer pulled up a photo on the screen. That's Marcus Grant, General Marcus Grant. For a moment, Turner was stunned. They showed him photos of military parades, meetings with world leaders, pictures of the general dressed in full military regalia, adorned with numerous medals earned for his service to the country. His colleagues looked at Turner and his face went pale. Are you serious? Was all he could say, staring at the screen where my image was displayed. A general, the man he had publicly humiliated in front of everyone. Yes, I'm serious, replied one of his colleagues with a sigh. You didn't just insult anyone. You humiliated one of the most respected people in the country. Turner couldn't believe what he had just learned. He realized that his actions yesterday weren't just a mistake. They were a catastrophe. All the disdainful words he had thrown at me, all his arrogance. And now he understood he had done it to a man who had dedicated his life to defending the very country where Turner was just an officer. He felt his chest tighten. His thoughts raced. How could I have been so wrong? What does this mean for my career? What now? These questions hit him with such force that Turner suddenly realized this wasn't just an error. It could change his life forever. His colleagues were already whispering, discussing the consequences. Some were considering how this would impact the station's reputation, while others talked about how his career might now be in jeopardy. Turner came to understand that his actions, driven by racist prejudices, weren't just a personal mistake. They were a reflection of a much deeper issue, and now that issue had turned on him. That he began to doubt himself his career choices, and the kind of police officer he had become. This moment became a turning point for him. Everything he thought he knew about himself suddenly seemed unstable. Standing in front of the mirror in the station's locker room, looking at his reflection, Turner realized that he had to change something if he wanted to preserve his honor and future. After the incident, I tried to distance myself from it all. I knew that moment might change a lot in Turner's life, but for me, it was just another day. I wasn't seeking revenge or looking to stir up scandal. I understood that if I responded with aggression, I would become part of the cycle I've always fought against. Yet, despite my silence, the event began to attract attention. Veterans I had served with started calling me, offering their support. People I had worked with began asking how I was coping. I didn't want this to become a source of public outcry, but my silence seemed to fuel interest. Everyone saw something different in the incident. Some saw injustice. Others saw the power of silent protest. But for me, it was a reminder that I couldn't allow myself to sink to the same level as those who judge based on skin color. I had many thoughts swirling inside. I knew that situations like this happen to others every day, and not everyone can face them with the calmness I did. But one thing was clear. My composure was my strength. And though many expected me to file a complaint or press charges, I chose to maintain my dignity. Meanwhile, somewhere in the police station, Turner began to fully grasp the depth of his mistake. For him, this was more than just an incident. The shock he had felt upon learning about my background had shifted into shame. Yesterday, he had been so certain of his righteousness, humiliating me in front of a crowd, completely unaware of who I really was. But now, that knowledge had become a burden he couldn't shake off. Every minute, Jake's mind kept returning to what had happened. He tried to justify himself, telling himself he was just doing his job, but something inside him whispered that this was more than just a mistake. It was a reflection of 
something deeper. Memories began to flash through his head, how he had treated other people on the job. He suddenly realized that far too often he had seen suspects based solely on their appearance. It became clear that his actions weren't accidental. They were the result of deeply ingrained prejudices he hadn't even questioned. He sat in his apartment, head bowed, hands clenched into fists. What have I done? That thought wouldn't leave him. Shame filled him, but with it came guilt. He knew he couldn't just forget about this incident. But what to do next? How could he fix what he had done? Uh, one evening, after a long day at work, Turner realized he could no longer live with this weight on his conscience. He made a decision. He had to do something to make amends for his mistake. He couldn't let this incident fade into the past as if it had never happened. His soul demanded redemption. He began to think about how he could approach me, how he could express his regret. He knew that a simple apology wouldn't be enough, but he couldn't see another way. Meanwhile, I continued living my life, not drawing attention to the incident. But my silence didn't mean I was unaware of what was happening. I noticed how the people around me started to reflect on what had taken place. And in a way, my silence became a symbol of strength and dignity for them. Turner, on the other hand, began preparing to meet me. He knew it wouldn't be easy, and he knew that I might not accept his apology. But a sense of resolve had grown within him. He couldn't continue living his life without taking this step. He understood that this was only the beginning, that the road to redemption would be long, but he knew he had to start somewhere. All day, I felt a strange sense of unease, as if something important was about to happen. Although I went about my usual tasks, my thoughts kept drifting back to the incident with Turner. Not because I was waiting for any consequences or reactions, but because I sensed a certain tension in the air, as if something significant was on the horizon. Deep down, I knew this wasn't over. That evening, as I sat in my chair with a book, I heard footsteps near the door. A few moments passed before I opened it and saw Officer Turner standing on the threshold. He shifted nervously from foot to foot. I instantly knew why he was there, even though he hadn't spoken a word. His eyes revealed a mixture of anxiety and unease. It was clear he had spent a lot of time thinking about what he was about to do. He hesitantly took a step forward, as if waiting for an invitation, but I stood there observing him, remaining outwardly calm. Inside, there was no anger, only curiosity. What would he say? What would he do? Could this man truly change his views after seeing his mistake? Or was this just an attempt to rid himself of guilt? Turner tried to start the conversation, but his voice trembled. He didn't know how to approach me, how to put his thoughts into words, and it was clear in every movement he made. He wiped the sweat from his forehead, his hands shaking as he spoke. I, I need to apologize. I listened, nodding silently. This was just the first step, and I knew he was doing it not only for me, but also for himself. He continued, I understand that what I did was wrong. I realize now who I humiliated, and I can't find any excuse for myself. His words sounded sincere, but it was obvious how difficult it was for him to speak. I could see the internal struggle going on inside him. He feared that his apology wouldn't change anything, that it might feel like just a formality. I knew that for him, this was more than just apologizing for a single incident. It was a step towards toward recognizing the deeper issues he had encountered. Turner went on, still struggling to find the right words. I don't know if I can change your opinion of me, but I want you to know that I genuinely regret what I did. I was wrong. My whole approach was wrong. My heart remained calm. I could see his tension, his doubts, his fears. But I knew this wasn't a situation where anger or resentment would lead to anything productive. My silence spoke more than any words could. Finally, Turner fell silent, waiting for my response. I stepped forward and looked him directly in the eyes. His face was tense, as if he was waiting for a verdict. But I spoke calmly and with conviction. 
I accept your apology, but you need to understand, this isn't just a mistake. It's a symptom of deeper issues. Your system, your upbringing, your society allow incidents like this to happen. My words weren't an accusation, but a reflection of a reality that many choose to ignore. I continued, an apology is just the first step. It's what you had to do. But the real question is, what will you do next? How will you change your thinking, your behavior, your work? Turner nodded, his face softening. He understood that simply apologizing wasn't enough. His journey was just beginning, and there was much for him to reflect on and change. I could see that a transformation had begun inside him, but a long road lay ahead. This was a moment when he truly realized the depth of the problem. He thanked me for the opportunity to speak and left, leaving me standing at my doorstep. I stood there for a few minutes watching him walk away, feeling that this incident might have been the start of something bigger. But was he ready for that journey? After Officer Turner left my home, I stood at the door for a long time, reflecting on what had just happened. <laughs> his words, his attempt at an apology, it didn't give me a sense of closure, but I hadn't expected that it would. I knew his journey was just beginning, and to be honest, I couldn't help but feel a small degree of doubt. Would he really be able to change? Would he truly grasp the full depth of his problem? I returned inside, sat by the window, and gazed at the city. My silence had always been my strength, but sometimes, in moments like this, I wondered, is it enough? Is calmness and restraint enough to change not only oneself, but also the world around us? Turner had taken his first step, and that mattered, but the path ahead would be no less difficult for him. I couldn't help but wonder if he would walk that path. Could he look at his life from a different perspective and admit that his past wasn't just a series of mistakes, but the result of deeply ingrained prejudices that permeate society? How would he come to terms with that truth? Meanwhile, Turner returns home after our meeting, his mind overwhelmed with thoughts. He can't shake the feeling that his world is falling apart. Everything he once believed in is now in question. How could I have been so blind? The question spins in his head over and over. All his life, he considered himself a good person, an honest officer who stood for order and justice. But now, he realizes that his actions, his decisions, were colored by biases he hadn't even been aware of. He sits down at his table, opens his laptop, and starts searching for information about racism, about how bias shapes our perception of the world and people. These are his first steps, but each one feels heavy. His understanding begins to shift. He reads articles, watches videos, listens to lectures, and suddenly it hits him. This problem is bigger than just him. It's not just personal, it's a systemic problem one that affects his entire profession. He realizes that simply changing himself won't be enough. He has to change something larger, change the approach, change the system. Turner arrives at work the next day with a different mindset. He already has a plan forming in his head. He knows he can't continue working the way he used to. Now, he feels an obligation to himself, to society, and to the people he once worked alongside. He decides to start a conversation with his colleagues about systemic racism and bias within the police force. At first, he finds it difficult to broach the subject. He knows that some of his colleagues might not take him seriously or even laugh at him, but he understands that this is his chance to make a difference. He starts with a simple conversation with one of his partners. They sit at the table during a break and Turner hesitantly begins, have you ever thought about how bias affects our work? His partner looks at him with confusion at first, but Turner keeps talking, sharing his experiences and realizations. This conversation is only the beginning, but it already feels like a huge step forward. Soon, Turner decides to raise the issue in a meeting with the leadership. He knows it's a risky move, but he's ready for it. He is no longer the man he once was. Now, he understands that change needs to happen not only within himself, but also in the world around him. 
It will be a long journey, but he's ready to see it through. Several months have passed since my meeting with Turner. Outwardly, my life returned to its usual rhythm. I continued living, doing my work, spending time with family and friends. But something inside me had changed. The silence I had maintained after the incident had taken on new meaning. It was no longer just quiet resilience, but a symbol. A symbol that you don't always need to shout to be heard. Every day, as I walk through the streets of the city, people look at me differently. I see their eyes filled with respect, and some even come up to me to express their support. This incident became more than just a conflict between me and one officer. It became a conversation starter, a catalyst for change. I never sought this, but society decided on its own that this event should mark the beginning of something bigger. Many veterans, colleagues, and even strangers began sharing their stories with me. People started speaking openly about injustice, bias, and racism. I listened, maintaining the same calm strength that had helped me back then. And I knew that my silence had done its job. It had sparked a desire for change in others. Turner had changed. It was obvious. I heard how he became an active participant in programs that trained his colleagues, how he spoke about the importance of treating all people fairly, regardless of their race or social status. He had come to understand that his job wasn't just about maintaining order, but about protecting justice, justice that should be equal for everyone. I saw him on news reports, engaging in discussions about police reform. He was no longer the man who had humiliated me in the city square. I often wondered what my path would have been if I hadn't remained silent that day, if I had chosen the path of aggression or revenge. I realized that my response had given Turner the chance to change. It gave him the time to reflect on his mistakes and to see that the problem was much deeper than it had initially appeared. One day I ran into an old friend on the street. We talked for a long time about how the world around us was changing. He said, your silence made many people realize that the fight isn't always in the shouting. Sometimes silence speaks louder than words. I smiled. I wasn't seeking recognition, but I understood that my example had truly made a difference in this world. Turner's story was just one of many, but it became emblematic. I heard how he shared with his colleagues how our encounter had changed him. He spoke about how deeply Ingrained bias had been in his life, unconscious, yet still driving his actions. He was no longer ashamed to talk about it. In fact, he saw it as important to acknowledge his mistakes and help others become aware of their own. For me, it was a sign that change is possible, even if it comes slowly. I knew that one event couldn't change the world, but it could start a chain reaction leading to something greater. Turner became a symbol that people can change as long as they're willing to face the truth. As for me, I continued living my life, staying true to my principles. I wasn't seeking revenge, nor did I desire retribution. I understood that. My silence had been more powerful than any outcry, and now, when people spoke about change, about reform, about justice, I knew that this journey had begun in those quiet moments when I stood in silence on the city square looking Turner in the eyes.